Hello, I'm Calm Cal and welcome to the channel. In this one we're going to have a look at RetroArch. What I want to do is play my PS1 games on my PC. RetroArch seems to be the backbone to a lot of emulation. I have tried this before and I thought, Phew, this is a bit complicated. I am learning, the same as you guys, so we can learn together if you want. So I'm just going to make a series of videos for RetroArch. What I have learned with RetroArch, watching different videos and all different things, Retroarch is like making love to a beautiful woman. To get the good stuff back, you gotta go down. So you go to the download, and then you do scroll down, right to the very bottom, or ish. There's loads of things to do with uh, Retroarch and everybody else joining in with all emulators and stuff. What we're looking for is nightly builds. So if you click on to nightly builds what we want is Windows because that's what I'm running on Windows 10 which is x86 64 so you click on that one and then we've got all these different things so if you scroll all the way back down to the bottom again remember you've got to go down and what we're looking for is RetroArch 7-zip so if you click on that one and then it'll start downloading so I say the stable version is 1.8.6 but we're on the download nightly so we'll just go to our desktop so we'll go to downloads folder and then we've got RetroArch 7-zip so what we'll do is click on here right click and then go extract to its own folder so we'll call it a RetroArch so then we can move it to wherever we want there and what you've got to remember is put it somewhere that you want to keep it because when the first time you run it it will stay where it is because if you move it later on all the bits of different work that you've done um, it will lose all of that it won't connect it all because there's loads of different folders and everything else and once you've run it for the first time it remembers where it is <laughs> so if you try to run it later on once you've moved it you're going to get problems I'm going to decide where I want to put this so it's all in its own folder and I can put that wherever I want to I'm going to put it in a new folder that I've created I'll just put it on my main drive emulation and what I'm going to do is just drop it in there so all I need to do is just drag and drop really press and hold and then drag it over there and there's a lot of files there I've right, got properties 617 folders so now we've got it where we want to keep it we can just close this one down let's close that one down this is the new folder then so we're just going to RetroArch and what we need to do is find the exe file as I say make sure that you were confident that it's in the right place double click on here to run RetroArch game box game box Okay, so I have actually got a controller already installed. What we're going to do is just press I think it's F on here for full screen. Yep, it's given full screen there. So this is the interface it starts with. It looks very much like the interface on the USB stick that I've got a review on for the PlayStation Classic, the one with all the, the games on. So you, you navigate this with the cursor keys up and down. I mean, you've got left and right with the cursor keys again but if you want to select something you press enter and if you want to go back you press the backspace or delete button so what I want to do first of all is just change this I don't want it looking this way I want it changed to the old PlayStation look so what we need to do is first go into settings select drivers press enter on there what we want to change is the menu so it's on ozone at the moment this is what this menu is called press enter on there and what we want to change it to is xmb so press enter on there what we're going to have to do now is go back and then restart retroarch so we can go file here close and if we go back into our menu 
and then double click on RetroArc again and there you go it's opened up as RetroArc and it's very similar to the PlayStation screen and I prefer this so I'm just going to press F on here for full full screen and navigation again up and down and left and right what I suggest you do first of all when you first run this is update everything so I'll go to online updater don't need to do that one yet but don't need to update install cores either so go to update assets that took what a minute update databases and what I do as well is configure your input so if you've got a joypad or anything like that go to settings go to input and then scroll down to hotkey binds well we'll do that in a second let's just just at the binds for um, the controller that we've got and it's automatically picked up the controller and what I want to do is to program everything that the way that I want it so press enter on here press the corresponding button on your controller four button controller this is the bottom one so press that one then go down to the next one press enter and then press the the left button and then this is the select button so I press select on the controller it's a start button on the controller and so on and so on and down and then right up and then we obviously haven't got a gun the turbo button I'm just going to use as L3 right so I want to make sure everything I've done so far is saved so select that one so that's saved successfully we go back to hotkey binds press your lower button to get into there so that's your new enter so menu toggle gamepad combo so if you press the bottom button on that one now and then if we select start and select that's the, the favorite one I, I normally like to use so we'll select that one and that's down as start and select so when we start a game now when we press start and select it will come out to this retro arc menu so if you're unsure of what keys the keyboard control come into here and you can see them all here yeah got all the keys on the right hand side so we just come out of here by pressing the right hand button and what we're going to do is try and save this information so if we press right hand button again and go into configuration file save current configuration okay so let's save that you have problems trying to save this if you've got a game running so always exit your game first before you save your current configuration this is a new feature, I don't know if it's on the main RetroArc, but it's certainly on this nightly build where you can actually dump your files for your PlayStation 1 discs that you've got and that's exactly what I am going to do. I've got quite a few PlayStation 1 games and this is what I intend to do. But if you have the aforementioned USB stick for the PlayStation Classic, I presume there's quite a few games on there that you can use. Nice. So I've got my copy of Dino Crisis 2. It's only a single disc this one. So I'm just going to concentrate on single disc games at the moment. But there is a way of playing and using multiple disc games for the PlayStation 1. And that will be a separate video. So make sure you like, subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications of when that other video will come up. So I've just inserted my PlayStation 1 disc into my CD-ROM drive. I'm just going to double click on here. And it's now going to dump the disc. This takes a little while. I'll let you know when it's finished, how long it's taken. But for this part, I'm just going to pause the video. So that took roughly about 15, 20 minutes or two cans of Carlin, one or the other. And what happens is 
the files get dumped into the same directory, the RetroArch directory, under the Downloads folder. So we double click in here. And what we've got, we've got two tracks here plus a Q file. I was really only expecting one to be honest. Don't know, Crisis 2 is only on one disk, so I don't know why it's created two different files. Normality, you get one Q file and one BIM file, and then what you have to do is you have to name them exactly the same, and then when the emulator starts, it looks for the Q file, and the Q file tells it what BIM file to load and in what order. So we'll leave it as this for the time being. I'm just going to close this. And then what we'll do is we'll go back into RetroArch. So what we'll do is we'll go into Online Updata, Center on there, Core Updata, and then what we're going to do is select the core that we want or the emulator that we want. And what we're looking for is one for Sony PlayStation. So we'll scroll down quickly for S. Uh, there's quite a lot of cores here, isn't there? What we're looking for is Sony PlayStation, Beetle, PSX, HW. So it's this one here. And I'm going to select enter on this one. So it's installed. So what we need to do now is install a BIOS file to run these games. We do need one for the PlayStation 1. Obviously I can't supply you with these or tell you where to get them but an internet search if you haven't got them but really you should only be doing this if you actually got a PlayStation 1 and PlayStation games. This is just for educational purposes. This is a way of playing your games that you already own on your computer. But here are the BIOS files that you need in order to play the games that you've got for your different areas. So you've got Europe, US and Japan and those are the different file names that you'll need. And here are the different file extensions that this system or emulator runs or recognises. We go back to RetroArch and in the system file, what you need to do is just paste your BIOS files in here. Back to the file system then. This is how it looks. You've got the three files here. The first one here, the .bin, that is the, the large file, which was done as track one. So I've, I've named it Dino Space Crisis Space 2.bin, which is what we we're expecting. And then this is the other track file that we, we had. So you, you name it exactly the same, but instead of .bin, it's got .sbi. And then with the .q file, you do need to edit this. So you do need a notepad editor. I have got a video which I'll link in the description with some utilities that are very useful. Included in this is 7-zip and notepad. And if you check the video description as well, I'll put in all the links to the different pages for notes for RetroArch and obviously the RetroArch download as well. So all you need to do is just highlight the .q file and then right click and then edit with notepad plus plus. So it comes up like this. This looks complicated, but it's really not. All this information is more or less in here. It's just the name of these files that you need to change, which are in these um, speech marks. So the first one is your bin file, the game file. And the second one is the exactly same, but it's the SBI file. So make sure that you do actually put the file extensions in correctly. Then when you've done it, press file and then save. Obviously mine's still open because I've just edited this. So you press save and that's it. And then you can close it. And that's all you need to do with the files. This is because it's the PAL version and that's why it's got an additional file. So we've loaded the core. We've put the BIOS files where they need to go. What I need to do now is just connect everything up and make it look nice. So if you're just back in the main menu, go down to show desk top menu and this brings this little file up here I've actually already done this just to make sure everything's working but what I've done is on the left hand side here you've got all your um, playlists so to create another playlist you just get into this area right click and select new playlist and what you need to do is type in the name and type the name in as you see it here so that's capital S for Sony, space, 
hyphen space capital P for play and then capital S for station if you don't type it in this exact format you won't get this little icon okay so make sure you type it right if you don't get this little icon you get somewhere else then you've typed it wrong and once you've typed it just press OK and this will generate this little this little playlist here so now you've created this what you do is just highlight it just by clicking on it and then to add games all you need to do is go into this area right click and then add entry and what you need to do is just put all the information in here what I'll do is I'll just show you what I did put in for, for Dino Crisis to get it to work so I'll just right click on here and edit it so you just need to select the path so you press on the two dots there and this is my path so I'm a G drive PS1 games Dino Crisis 2 so you double click in there and it's after the file that you need to run so it's the Q file that you need to select so you just double click on there and that'll populate there it might automatically select the core but if it doesn't then just select the, the beetle core because it's the only one we've got installed and the database should automatically populate but if it doesn't just select the Sony one and then once that's done just click OK and then it is saved and then to add your box art you can just right click on here and then download all thumbnails for this playlist and then it will automatically download your box art you gotta make sure that the game's actually named correctly because if it's not named correctly it won't usually find the box art so if it hasn't got Europe in, in brackets at the end then it might not find it but if you, if you still can't find it and you've got your own and then just drag the picture into this little folder here just drag it into the area and then it should populate in there if you do have any problems running game so just make sure that there's no red marks in here normally if it's the files highlighted in red it means something's missing and that's what you need to run it All right so we just close here and then we're back in the retro arc menu and then what we can do is just go back up to the top and then scroll to the right and there we are right at the very end this is our game to run and we click on here and then click run and there we are all up and running So just turn this down a little bit. And there we are, game all up and running, all nice. Obviously this is PlayStation 1 and with emulation you can improve the graphics slightly. So what I'll do is a new video with just how to improve the on-screen presence of the graphics and the settings can't put it all in this video because the video is going to be too long so don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell for future videos I'm going to do another emulator for PlayStation 1 games a friend of mine um, has tipped me off with another emulator that we can use so I'm going to explore that option as well so we're going to look in a little bit better than the normal PlayStation And please do leave a comment of your favourite PlayStation 1 games and I'll see whether I can buy some because there's still quite a few about the PlayStation 1 games. There's always some knocking about on eBay and things. My name is Cal, have a good morning, afternoon or good evening, farewell till next time and I will see you later. Thanks for watching. So it definitely looks better than the original PlayStation. Controls are still crap though. <laughs>